He is an artist who seems to be exploding on TikTok every few months, putting out 60 songs a year that average millions of streams. In this video, I'm going to cover who he is and how he got to where he is today. Thank you for watching, and I hope you enjoy. He was born on February 26th of 2000 in California to a Hispanic mother and a Romanian mother. Now, his father would be his first major musical influence because his father was in a band and would often play his music around Yeet. At 13 years old, Yeet's family would move from California to Oregon and it wouldn't take long for him to realize there's not a lot for a kid his age to do there. But he did have a friend who had access to a studio and at 15 years old, Yeet, then going by Lil Yeet, decided that he could start working on music and he realized really quickly he was really good. The only thing is, Today he realized he was not really good back then. He's deleted all the tracks from that time. They are hard to find, but he does say that if he didn't think he was amazing at the time, it's very unlikely that he would have continued working on music. After high school, he ended up moving to New York because he figured it was a way better place to be working on music. He changed his name from Lil Yeet to just Yeet because he thought one word just rolled way better. And he released his first song with his name, Brink. Now he had actually contacted and got this released on the Elevator YouTube channel which already had a bit of a fan base at the time and this would help Yeet establish his first ever fan base. Not long after releasing Brink, he would be introduced to Danny Wolf and Can Can. These are two producers he would become great friends with, still works to this day, and at the time he gives them huge credit with progressing his music and shaping it into what it is today. Now with Danny Wolf, he would end up releasing a collab album back in 2018. He would also have his single Brinked be put on this project, which would give it another boost in streams. Now a little bit into his stay in New York, he realized he was working on a lot of music and it felt a bit wasteful not releasing the vast majority of it. So he ended up making a new SoundCloud account called Ye Archive and you would consistently throw some songs out on there, which many of them are deleted today. Now, also during this phase of him working on a ton of music, he realized he started to plateau and kind of stagnate with his progression with his music, and he realized that he was the one holding himself back. This was until he met another producer named Wylin, who would introduce him to some plugins that would completely change his sound to make it a lot more what it's like today. This is where Yeet becomes very recognizable. In January of 2019, Yeet would release Wake Up Call, which was his very first independent mixtape. Later that year, he would be on a collab album with seven tracks on it, and then he would end the year with his 13 track album, I'm So Me. Although these mixtapes and albums didn't do any crazy numbers, they were huge towards just getting Yeet out there and getting him to really understand what making music, releasing projects, and all that is like. And what he would soon find out is, he could do this really easily. His first release of the year would be 22 track Alive, and it would perform well, but nothing like what was to come on 4L when he released the song, Sorry About That. Now TikTok would take the song and absolutely run with it. Fans would go and they would follow Yeet on Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, everywhere. He was getting way more attention, this was the best that his career was ever going. All the other songs, it was a 20 song album. I forgot to mention that. All the other songs started getting way more streams as well. And as the attention was kind of building for him, he would decide later in that same year, he would drop a third 20 plus song album. This album was called Up To Me and would contain 22 songs and he would do it again with another TikTok hit. Get Busy would be the second time that Yeet had exploded on TikTok in the same year. Now, we have to give Yeet some credit for this because we all know the bells that were a big part of that song blowing up. He actually goes, he takes his tracks, sends them to the producer, He, the producer send it back, and then Yeet kind of goes over it and produces again. And he'll add certain things like the bells. He might mess with the mixing a little bit. He's just kind of a perfectionist in a way with his music where he doesn't want it to end with the producer. He wants to be the guy who has the final touches. So he did that with Get Busy, added the bell. That blew up, 
got him all over TikTok, got his following counts going only higher yet again on Instagram, Twitter, his Spotify songs, all of them were streaming way more because this song is bringing so much attention to the 22 track album that he was basically the most talked about artist. And what helped this was him getting a shout out from Drake and then posting a picture of him partying with Drake, getting a shout out from Trippy Red, a song leaking where him and Lil Uzi were on the same one and Lil Uzi was allegedly the feature. And then also him getting a shout out or getting DMs from Playboy Cardi. Now, Too Alive would end up getting a deluxe with nine more songs on it. But at this point, Ye had made a habit of something that is very hard for other artists to do. On three consecutive albums, he's had one song absolutely explode. Now, this one isn't because of TikTok like the other ones. He put out a song named Poppin', which would get a Cole Bennett music video. I need my drugs. I need my love. A few months later would be one of the biggest opportunities Yeet has ever had. He would release a Rich Minion song, which was designed for the Minions movie, which would animate a Cole Bennett directed video. I call my name. I call my name. Let's just think about this for a second, right? Cole Bennett got to work with a major movie studio. He takes a dub with that alone, but he also ended up getting a lot of views on the video, so that's huge for him. Minions and Yeet benefited each other massively because them working together created a TikTok trend that nobody could have seen coming and I don't think could be replicated if another movie studio intentionally went for it. Yeet's fan base, being a bunch of teenagers who like messing around, decided to start the movement of going to the Minions movie dressed up all professional like an entrepreneur or something like that. They would attend this movie like it was a massive feature film professional something like that this would explode on tiktok and people who have never even heard about yeet or listened to rap would end up hearing about this minion thing the movie's sales would go incredibly higher and yeet's music video would get way more attention it would get way more streams towards him everybody benefited from this and this might be something that ends up changing the future of marketing for rap because you might see a lot more movie studios saying we want to work with a rapper or something like that Think about it like the same situation as the Travis Scott burger leading to the Jack Harlow meal, the Sweetie burger, so on and so forth. This could be the same version of it for rap marketing where all of a sudden you see a lot more movie studios trying to work with rappers to promote their products. Now all this just leads us to today where he recently put out an album and he talked about how he was going to do better than Nav in terms of sales and everything like that and destroy him. Ye is going to end up adding a element of, of competitiveness to rap that we're kind of missing. Now the only question is with this album, is Ye going to have one of those massive TikTok songs again? Do we know that? No, we have no way of knowing. But if he does, will the album be good around it? I'd be really interested in seeing how this album does if he doesn't have a standout single. With that being said, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoy. And if you did enjoy, you might enjoy some of my other videos. See you later.